No matter how you installed MongoDB, there are a couple of other tools that we installed besides that MongoD server binary that we started up with last time. So in this video, we're going to look through a couple of those other processes. The most important one for us right now is the Mongo process. This is the MongoDB client where we're gonna be spending most of our time throughout this course. It's actually a JavaScript console, which means we'll be writing JavaScript to work directly with our MongoDB databases. You can start by running the mongo command to connect to the server, and then you'll get your prompt. However, besides the mongo client and the mongo server, there are a few other tools for MongoDB administration and management. We won't be looking at how to use them throughout this course, but I'll give you a brief overview of them right now. So first, there's mongo import and mongo export. As you might guess, these are tools for importing and exporting data from the databases. As you know, mongo database content is stored in bsyn, and we'll be discussing more about bsyn in a minute, but it's very similar to json. As you can imagine, being able to export your database as json is really handy, and being able to import json into your database is even handier, so that's what the mongo import and mongo export tools are for. But you probably don't want to back up your database in json. It's a better idea to have a binary backup, so that's where you can use the mongo dump command. This is going to spit out an actual bsyn file, it's binary data, it's not text data. To restore that binary backup, you can then use the mongo restore command. But if you want to convert that binary bsyn file into json, you can just use the bsyn dump command. We've installed that as well, and it works fine with the files that mongo dump outputs. Then there's mongo stat. This tool doesn't output a single file or log or something like that. It's something that continually runs while your database server is running, and it gives you an overview of the status of the currently running mongodb instance. A lot of these statistics won't mean a whole lot to you right now, but once you have a better understanding of how MongoDB works, you'll find that they're more useful. Now these aren't all of the different tools that we installed when we installed MongoDB, but that's quite a few of them. Most of the other ones are involved with statistics about your database and other administration things that you can do. But let's wrap up this video by talking a little bit about bsyn. bsyn, B-S-O-N, stands for binary JSON, and bsyn is JSON with two important additions. First, as I've already said, it's a binary representation of JSON. It's not raw text data. Second, it includes some data types beyond the standard JavaScript ones. The most important one for MongoDB is arguably the object ID type, which is the default type that MongoDB uses as the unique ID for items in our database. But there's also date time and timestamp types as well as 32 and 64-bit integers. We can store binary data in there, and there's a couple of other types as well. So that's a rundown of some of the tools that you now have as part of your MongoDB installation. At this point, you might be wondering, how would you use MongoDB from an actual application, you know, from your PHP, your JavaScript, or Ruby code? Well, MongoDB has drivers for many different languages. Some of them are officially supported by mongodb.org, and other ones are built by the community. But between the official ones and the community-built ones, you should find the drivers that you need for pretty much any programming language. Later on in this course, we're going to be looking at a couple of drivers for a few different languages, but first we have to get our minds around a few of MongoDB's most important concepts. So we'll start doing that in the next screencast.